Why, hello there. My name is Putter, and I'm more than willing to help you with how to play this decided instrument, which is, of course, the viola. Of course, I'm not going to go through anything advanced, but I'm go just going to teach you the basics. Let's start with some knowledge. If you haven't known already, the viola classifies as one of the four string instruments. These string instruments include the violin, cello, double bass, and of course, the viola. There are four strings on the viola. An easy way for me to remember which pitch is highest is looking at how thick the strings are. If it's thicker, it, it's lower, and if it's thinner, it's higher. The lowest string is C and keeps going up until A. The four in order are C, G, D, and A. Oh, great! Now you can identify which string is which. Now, to actually hold it properly. As you can see, your viola probably comes with a form of headrest. Insert that onto the viola at the bottom. At the bottom left of your instrument is the place that your head can stay on. Put your head right there and tilt it to the left. Grab the instrument with your left hand, which should be placed on the place that's kind of the opposite of the bridge. Great, now you should be in a pretty good form. If you want to see a more professional video of someone doing this, look at this guy's video right here. Otherwise, just skip to the timestamp given. Hi, and welcome to Fiddlerman.com. This is the site where I'll teach you how to play the violin for free. Today I'd like to talk to you about holding the violin. Holding the violin is very important, obviously, because if we're not comfortable holding the violin, if we're stiff, if we're tense, or if we're in pain, we're not going to want to play for a long period of time. We need to be able to play for longer periods of time so we can practice. Practice makes perfect, right? There are two parts of the violin that actually aid us in holding it. The part on the top of the violin is called the chin rest. Its purpose is called the chin rest because we rest our chin on it. Under the violin, we have the shoulder pad. In my case, I don't even have a shoulder pad. What I have is a makeup remover pad. It's made out of rubber. The reason I have it is because the back side of a violin is very smooth, and so is our clothes, our t-shirts, our tucks, our tails. They're all very smooth and slippery, and I don't want the violin feeling like it's going to slide off of my shoulder. So, chin rest, shoulder pad. You need to take the time, you need to visit a violin shop and try as many chin rests and shoulder pads as you can. You need to feel like you're very comfortable. I would start off by trying to find the right chin rest, a chin rest that feels like you can rest your chin comfortably on it. And then when you find the right chin rest, you at that point try to find a shoulder pad with the right height. A lot of the shoulder pads today are adjustable so you can change the height. Now. Begin by taking the violin, lifting up your chin slightly, and resting the violin up against your neck. Just push it up against your neck, not hard, just get it there. I don't even grip the violin. I like to have the violin balanced on my shoulder, right in the center, not too far forward because then I'll have to grip it to hold it, not too far back. I want to have it balanced. Note that I'm not gripping it with my left hand right now. It's, it's there, but I'm really just letting it rest there. Not gripping it. Then, you take your chin, lift it up, and just make it come down on the chin rest. Maybe turn your head so it comes down on the chin rest. You want to feel a comfort zone. You want to feel it just slide in there. You don't want to feel any pressure points. Once again, lift up your chin. Put your violin on your shoulder so it's actually touching your neck. Turn your head, look up over the violin, and feel a comfortable fit. If it's not comfortable, you may not have the right chin rest. Don't let anybody tell you you're going to get used to the chin rest with time because uh, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. You should be able to hold the violin so that you can take your hand off without squeezing too hard, without gripping. You should feel completely relaxed. Take your left shoulder hand and put it on your right shoulder to see how that feels. And once again, 
don't feel like you have to grip the violin, feel like it's there comfortably just resting there. This is your first lesson and thank you for visiting Fiddlerman.com. Once that's clear, you would want to know how to hold a bow. As you can see, a bow is quite fragile and should be kept safely. Wrap your hand around the bottom bit as though you were to grab something. Then, lift your picky on top of it and tilt. It's as simple as that. And now you know how to hold it. Again, watch this guy if you're a bit confused. Hi and welcome to Fiddlerman.com. Today I want to show you how to hold the violin bow. Alright, so begin by putting your thumb between this leather piece right here and the beginning of the frog, just like that. Put your other fingers on top like that and rest your pinky on top of the stick. Keep the pinky curved and then turn your hand uh, counterclockwise like this. That's the way to hold the bow. Now, reason for having your fingers kind of together is to be able to establish a good flexibility for later on. This is not something you'll be able to do right away, but later you want to be able to, when you change bows, make a flexible, smooth bow change. Okay, so I'll do it one more time for you. Take your thumb, put it there between the beginning of the frog and the leather. Take your other fingers on top, put your pinky on top, keep it curved, and turn your hand. This finger can wrap a little bit. This finger gives you the pressure when you want to play stronger. Instead of using any muscles, you kind of turn your hand into the strings. So turn it counterclockwise, and that's a perfect bow hold right there. I'll give you some other angles here. The thumb is curved as well. The pinky is always curved. Now as I go up, they're curved more. As I go down, they flex. Down, up bow, down bow, up bow. So basically that's the way you hold the bow. Don't worry about the flexibility right now. In the beginning, just worry about holding it like this. Everything else will come with work and practice later on. Thank you for visiting Fiddlerman.com. Now, you might know how to hold these things, but now you actually need to play the viola and make a nice sound. You would want to use as much of the bow as you possibly can. And, oh yeah, don't forget the rosin, it can be very helpful sometimes. And so yeah, put the bow on the string with the note that you desire, and make sure to put push it near the bridge, not hardly, but enough to make a big and strong sound. Do not push too hard or too light, as of because the result would not be nice. Just do everything I've taught you, and it'll go perfectly. A lot of people overlook this next part, which is to care for the instrument really well. And you just really do not want to damage the instrument, because it's like your prized possession. And so yeah, keep it tight. Always make sure that it doesn't just randomly end up on the floor somewhere. That that is where someone's gonna step it, step on or something. I suggest you put it somewhere where you instinctively know it is the safest place. Make sure that when you put it back, make sure that you put it in the case correctly and gently. Do this, and Miss Tessa wouldn't have to get mad at you. For the next part, I would like to say that all people have their own ways of learning. However, when I learn a new instrument, repetition is key. When I keep repeating the same things, it gets stuck somewhere in the back of my brain, and it stays there. It, is it doesn't require a lot of time. Try to do something like 10 minutes a day or so. And finally, I just want to say that if this is your first ever try, don't get pushed down by the others. Just because you didn't start off good, doesn't mean you're bad at it. Remember that we all used to be like you, and we wouldn't have ever gotten here without trying. And another important thing is to listen to your teacher. In this case, she's Miss Tessa. She definitely knows what's best for you. But that's enough for the day though. Goodbye everyone. Uh, I wish you all great luck, though you probably won't need it. See you.